Well, uh, good afternoon, Rebel fans. I um, <laughs> just got home from church, and uh, I got to thinking. Um, I need to apologize uh, for my previous video. I um, Not because what I said, but because what I didn't say. Um, I guess you need to know more about me. Uh, well, like I told you, my name is Sammy Wilson. Um, I'm 26 years old. I got my business degree from... Ole Miss um, in 2009. Um, in my third year of law school, I also have a bit of a mathematical background. Um, I played a little bit of high school football, not too much. I played in middle school. Um, I was really a small guy, and to be honest with you, I was much more uh, concerned with what was going on in Oxford. Um, that was, you know, about the time Eli was there. Of course, I've always been a Rebel fan. I grew up um, watching guys like uh, John Avery, Grant Hurd, uh, Stuart Patridge, Roel Preston, Corey Peterson. I mean, surely all you Rebel friends remember guys like that. You know, Derek Burgess. There's just, there's so many, and we could go on and on and on. Um, I'd like to go ahead and tell you, uh, you know, now that I'm throwing my name into the mix for this, uh, that I feel... A change needs to be done. Uh, maybe a little bit about my philosophy on it um, and everything. Well, first of all, offensively speaking, I believe you have to be balanced. I understand uh, you need to be able to run the ball to, to run the clock, but you need to be able to throw up the ball to open up some holes for your running backs. I don't care how good your line is. I don't care how good your backs are. If you can't throw the ball, you can't win most of the time. And for God, for goodness sakes, you need a quarterback that can see over the offensive line. You've got to. Um, now, defensively speaking, defense wins championships. It's true. Um, I think the Rebel defense last night played superb. And uh, if you think about it, they really only gave up one touchdown because the other one came off a fumble from the offense. No one thought the defense was going to play that well. And I, I've got to give them... Um, a lot of respect for that, and I think you have to have an aggressive defense, especially in the Southeastern Conference. You can't sit back, because if you do, they're going to come at you, and uh, teams like Alabama and LSU, they have too much firepower and too many weapons, and I don't just mean to limit it to teams like that. Just look at what Vanderbilt has done to Ole Miss the last couple of years. It hasn't been pretty. Um Let's also talk about special teams. With the, the way we punted last night, it is not hard to see why he he has really um, got some attention from the media. Uh, it was excellent. Uh, we did a good job with the field goal kicking. Of course, we don't need to settle for field goals when you're on the three-yard line. That's the problem. Get those nine feet. Get into the end zone. When you're in the SEC, nine feet you got to get it done. Um, I think that some things that you know people are doing, the 100 improvements in 100 days, that's great. Um, I think it's great to bowl in the stadium. Um, all that's wonderful to improve this, improve everything from the colors on the field to the condiment stations to the, everyone wearing red. However... That doesn't win ball games, and uh, I think one of the one things that should have been improved and should have been on the hundred improvement in hundred days um, list was the play calling. And uh, there's just sometimes that maybe you shouldn't throw a tight end screen. Sometimes you shouldn't run it up the middle. Sometimes you should take a shot. I'm of the philosophy that on second and one, if you get a big run on first down or you get a pass on first down, which you should pass it sometimes on first down. I'm going to throw that out there. That may help you not be so darn predictable. But second and one, you should take a shot. Throw it down the field every once in a while. You know, let's not just run it up the yards and get those, run it up the middle and try to get those two yards. I mean, that's great to get the first down, but you know what? On third down, you should be able to get it. you got to open up the offense, and that's the philosophy I'm from. Now, um, I like to say that I love Ole Miss. I do. 
I love the team. Um, I love everything about Ole Miss football. And I know there's been a lot of strife lately with the mascot deal. And, uh, you know, I just want to say one quick thing on that. Um, I really wasn't for the way that it was handled. Um, I don't mind. I don't want to say I don't mind. I love the Colonel. I love the history and the passion that is Ole Miss football. However, the way it was handled was just not really smart. Um, it was they, it was really abrupt and kind of just in your face. I'm not naive enough to know that sometimes things need to change. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying in this case they needed to. I'm not taking a side one either. Either way, let me make that clear. However, if they were going to change the mascots, someone who was beloved as the colonel um, to such a large group of people, uh, there should have been, I don't know, a ceremony or something, you know, a kind of a passing of the torch, a, 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 a vigil, if you want, um, something of that nature. I mean, uh, I think that's one reason. I think there's a lot of hurt in a lot of people, and, you know, um, some people I've heard like to spell fun, W-I-N. Well, there's not a lot of fun right now. So, again, that's a little bit about me. Um, <laughs> heck, maybe I've got a better chance of getting a coaching job than I do finding a good um, lawyer job out there with the way the market is. I don't know. Um, but I just want to let you know a little bit about me since I am, again, formally throwing my name into the mix for any coaching jobs that do become available. Um, I don't know what I should tell you all. Um, I could say, um, Ole Miss fans, we're going to turn things around. You know, I could do the whole Obama thing and say change, but I'm just going to give it to you straight. Um, we need somebody that bleeds red and blue. We need somebody that doesn't isn't in it for anything but to win, to realize is that those 50-something thousand, soon to be 70,000 when they do get the stadium renovated, you know, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. You know, there's people up there that travel hundreds of miles to get there and, you know, leave brokenhearted. And it's not the player's fault. It's not. Um, you know, Ole, the Ole Miss family, I think we should take a lesson last year. You know, there was a lot of there was a lot of negative things about Auburn with the, you know, Cam Newton situation. But, you know, it seemed like I remember seeing a lot of the Auburn family all in. You know, they just, I don't think there was a more united fan base in the country last year than Auburn. And when you're united, good things happen. And, uh... By what I'm saying right now, I'm not trying to, you know, make us not united because we already are that way. I'm just uh, telling you what I think we could do to move in the right direction. So, it's raining outside. Uh, it's kind of like the tears of Rebel fans coming down the day. Uh, hopefully, they'll hit it hard this week. Uh feel bad for Brandon Bolden and the boys that are injured that aren't going to get to play this season. I know that's that hurts. That hurts them. So say a prayer for them. Um, Y'all have a good Sunday afternoon. I'm about to get me some lunch. I, uh, God bless you and uh, hotty toddy.